Oh. Yeah. They were supposed to tell you that before you got up there. Apologies. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball National Semifinal Game 2 post-game press conference featuring the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach and follow up with questions from our student athletes Hannah Stolke and Caitlin Clark. Student athletes will then be dismissed and then we'll open up the floor for questions for Coach. Coach, if you could, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll move forward to the questions. Couldn't be happier with our performance tonight in the second half. Uh, first half was a little rough for us, but you know, I mean, we really kept believing and I'm just so proud of the character of these young women to maintain their composure uh, through some pretty tough times in the first half. And we got it to within six at halftime and we felt good about that. Um, I thought Hannah Stalky was amazing tonight, um, but we're really thrilled to be playing in the championship game for the second year in a row. As a reminder to those in the room, please raise your hand. We'll get the microphones to you. We'll start with Howard, go to Nancy, and then the gentleman in the gray, and then I'll work my way around the room. Howard May Dalton, congratulations to all of you. Uh, Caitlin, we spoke about Hannah in February. You talked about wanting to get her more involved. The next game, she scored 47 points. Here we are two months later, and she has the game that she just had. Just take me through that process, what you've seen, and what Hannah has done over this period of time to further establish herself. Yeah, I think Hannah's tremendous, and I think it's just the confidence and belief. You know, I think she, tonight she played with an energy about herself of, you know, she really could go in there and dominate, and, you know, she goes toe to toe with Aaliyah Edwards, who, in my mind, is one of the best players in the country. Um, you know, was physical with her, guarded her well, boxed her out, um, and, you know, she wasn't afraid to take it at her either. I thought um, when they subbed in some post players off the bench, Hannah continued to go at them. Um, and, I, you know, I'm just super happy for Hannah. She's worked so hard um, to be in this moment. She goes five for seven from the free throw line, makes some big free throws for us. Um, but, yeah, she was definitely a difference maker. So uh, I think this is the Hannah we all know, um, you know, just having that confidence within herself because we all have it in her. So just would be super happy for her. I'm going to move to our right, Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Hannah, what was working for you tonight, and, and how much has the confidence that your teammates have in you made a difference for you this season? Um, I think the confidence is everything, um, especially hearing, you know, Caitlin Clark talk about me like that. Um, it, you know, it gives you a confidence boost. I think anyone would say that. Um, but they just fed me the ball very well, and um, the ball was going in for me tonight. So. I'm going to go to the second row. We'll go to Trey. Then we'll go Jonathan Tannerwald, and then we'll move over. I do have Jeff and uh, a couple other folks in the queue as well. Trey Modlin, WOVU 95.9 FM. What was UConn doing so well in the first half to limit your team to 26 points and to limit you, Caitlin, to six points? Is that a question for both student athletes? Yes. I can. We'll start with Caitlin. Uh, honestly, like UConn's a really good defensive team. They're one of the best defensive teams we've seen all year. I think Nika did a tremendous jo got job guarding me. Um, uh, we got some, some good looks. They just didn't go in. Um, and sometimes that's just what happens. We miss some, some easy bunnies around the rim. Um, but I think the, the best thing about our group is, you know, we went to the locker room at halftime and, you know, it wasn't like, oh, come on, you got to make shots. It was, no, stop turning the ball over and you're going to be perfectly fine. We knew at some point our shots was, were going to go down. And, you know, we put up 45 points in the second half, um, 25 in the third quarter, um, came out in the fourth quarter and started really hot. So I don't think it was a, you know, a th like a freaking out of our offense not working. I think it was just a, you know, it'll come around. You know, we didn't execute great, and we were only down six. We felt really confident in that, and nobody panicked. Everybody knew just need to clean it up a little bit, and that's exactly what we did. And Hannah? Uh, <laughs> she never leaves me anything to say. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Not bad. Yeah. We'll move on to Jonathan up in the front. Thanks. Jonathan Tannerwald of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Caitlin, this question is for you. Some of the shots in the first half for you obviously weren't falling late. Mm -hmm. in the, it was a moment in the second quarter, you drove the lane for a layup, mm -hmm. and it sounded like the Iowa fans knew right away that it was a big play because shooters often, when they're not hitting from mm -hmm. long range, they'll, they'll drive inside. Is that something that was on your mind mm -hmm. to do in that moment? Yeah, I think honestly, like, my shots felt really good in the first half. Like, I thought a few of them were in, and you know, sometimes that's what happens as a shooter. You know, you get a little cold. I think I was, what, 0 for 6 and then finished 
three for five from the three-point line in the second half. That's, you know, not too bad. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, don't fall in love with your three-point shot. Get into the faint, get in the paint, um, get some easy baskets. Um, you know, then that's kind of what I did. I would have liked to get my feet in the paint a little bit more in the second half. But, um, you know, they played really good defense on me, honestly. Like, when I started driving, they threw two people at me. They were going to make me give up the ball. And... Um, I think that's one of the greatest ways our program has evolved over the course of, you know, me being here. I used to feel like I had to do everything, and now, you know, I have so much trust in my teammates, and my teammates have so much trust in me, and I just knew they were going to make plays down the stretch. Kate was huge down the stretch, made some big plays for us, and, um, you know, that's the reason we won the game. It wasn't, it wasn't just Caitlin. It wasn't just Hannah. It was all five players on the court came up and made big plays at, you know, really crucial times. We're going to go to our right gentleman in a gray shirt. Please proceed. For, this was for both uh, Caitlin and uh, Hannah. The Chrissy Schilling Acker and Beacon Journal. Can you describe the, the wave of emotions just in those last 9.6 seconds? Just, I mean, you go from the potential disappointment to the offensive foul and, and, and sort of the opportunity to kind of feel like, you know, you, you were going to advance on. We could start with Hannah. Yeah, um, I don't think I was ever worried about the game, you know. Um, we had the chance to get a defensive stop, and that's what we did. You know, Gabby's great in those situations. She always comes up with big plays, whether it's a block or um, whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, we had some costly turnovers there in our last two offensive possessions that, you know, isn't really like us. We had four turnovers in the second half, and two of our turnovers come late in the fourth quarter. So, um, you know, those are situations we get put in all the time in practice. So you would like to execute them better. But I think our, our group is so mature and so experienced that, like, you don't have time to worry about that. Like, it happened. It's over. You better focus and move on to the next play. And like Hannah said, like, Gabby Marshall just comes up with big defensive plays all the time. Like, you see it time and time again for us. Um, and she doesn't get enough credit for what, what she does. She guards one of the best players in the country and really, you know, challenges, challenges her quite a bit. You know, Paige had a great game. I thought Gabby just played great defense on her. Even when Paige made some tough baskets, Gabby just responded and kept going up there and guarding her. So um, I'm really proud of her. And, um, you know, I'm proud of our group for, you know, just being able to flip the page and move on to the next play. We're going to go Jeff, then Michelle, then Lindsay. Right here in front of you. Yep. Kenny wrote a WHBC radio. Caitlin, this is for you. A lot of the talk was Caitlin versus Paige, but this was a team win tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, how important is that for the confidence of everybody moving forward and for you as well? Yeah, I think our team's confidence is pretty good at this point in the year. Obviously, there's only one more game uh, left to go, and um, it doesn't surprise me. Like. The reason we've won games all year long is because we play Iowa basketball, and that's sharing the ball, high assist numbers, low turnovers. Um, obviously, you know, would have liked to have more assists tonight, but uh, we didn't shoot the ball the greatest. We didn't, you know, things like that. And um, I don't know. I mean, I think everybody's confidence has been at, you know, an all-time high throughout the Big Ten tournament and during the NCAA tournament, and that's how it needs to be, and that's the reason we're at this point uh, going into the national championship game is, you know, everybody's stepping up. It's not just me. It's not just – you know, one player, that's not what this is. We wouldn't be at this point right now if it was just one player. And, um, you know, everybody comes up and makes really big plays when we need them. And, you know, Sydney Falter has six offensive rebounds tonight. That's pretty incredible. Um, so I think it's just, you know, the small things. Everybody comes up and does little things that eventually, you know, changes the tide of the game and, and we're able to win. I'm going to go to our right, Michelle. Michelle Smith from the next. Caitlin, what did Kate Martin do for you guys tonight? <laughs> yeah, I think Kate. <laughs> Well, poor Kate has gone <laughs> quite a while without breaking her nose and having blood gush out of it. And then in one of her last career games, she's on the floor and she has hurt her nose again. I don't know if it's broken or not, but um, I think Kate's just toughness, resiliency, and leadership is the biggest thing. And I mean, you see it. Like, Kate's a pro player. Like, you see her game. She's hitting fadeaway jump shots. She's going at people. Um, the way she took over at the end of the fourth, she came up with, I think, six straight points for us. Um, I mean, I'm just so proud of her. She's worked so hard over the course of this offseason. She knew she was going to be a focal point for us on, on offense. And, um, you know, I couldn't be more proud of her. Um, you know, she's had a long career. She's, you know, all she's ever dreamed of is being an Iowa Hawkeye, and she embodies that every single day. I'm going to stay to our right. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Uh, Hannah, the game was very physical at times. They were calling nothing. And then other times they were calling a lot. And then obviously ended with an, a big call. I wondered if you could talk about that. And then also, you got your hand on Caitlin's 
missed free throw and tipped it to Sid. You have to do that sometimes when the game is so physical. Um, I think, yeah, um, the game's physical. It's basketball. Um, sometimes the refs are going to call it. Sometimes they aren't. So we just had to play through that the whole game. And I thought we did that pretty well. We're going to go to the back, the gentleman with the gray shirt. Then we'll come up to the front, Dion, and then work our way to the gentleman in the second row. And then, yep, got you as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Wiley Jahari, Spectrum News. Um, I just want to know, how do you guys plan on handling South Carolina's inside dominance? Uh, well, I think the biggest thing is we haven't gone over a scouting report yet. Um, you know, I think just enjoying this win and celebrating this win. But, you know, you have 24 hours to turn the page and move on. And, um, you know, the great thing about us is we're not going to stay in one defense for too long. We're going to have a bunch of different things up our sleeves. We're going to try a bunch of different things. But... You know, South Carolina has been the top of the top. They're in a, a different league, and we're going to do everything we can to try to be right there with them. And um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing is you know enjoy this tonight, and we'll go over the scout early, early in the morning. We're going to go our far right, Dion. All right, Dion Cash, Fox Sports. Congratulations, Hannah. Um, when did you realize that you needed to kick in gear offensively uh, when you saw that Caitlin was kind of struggling offensively? And Caitlin, this is the matchup everybody wanted to see. The rematch, South Carolina, Iowa. How do you feel about that matchup? And um, that's pretty much it. We'll start with Anna. Um, I think from the jump, I was being aggressive. Um, I thought I prepared better for this game than I did for the last. So. Yeah, I think it uh, feels like every time we're going into a game, this NCAA tournament, it's like everybody wanted to see this, just one after the next. And so I think it's good for women's basketball. I mean. You know, I think being in this moment before, I think, you know, gives our group a good understanding of what to expect. Um, you know, we know what South Carolina brings to the table. We know we're going to have our hands full. Um, the way that they played tonight was incredible. Um, but, you know, it's the national championship. It's the last game of my career. It's the last game for five people on this team. So I don't think uh, motivation will be hard to come by. We're going to stay to our right. Galen, Mike Lucas, WKYC. Uh, when there was 1.1 seconds left, you ended up throwing off, I think it was Paige's back. Yeah. Wasting some time. Was that something you kind of just did instinctually? Is that something you and Coach had spoken about as a, a way to kind of burn clock? Or is that just kind of how the game played out and something you did on your own? I think it's just like, a, you know, you, you, I watch a lot of basketball. I understand basketball. And she had her back turned to me. So, I, you know, the biggest point, you know, the, the biggest thing at that point of the game is, like, you just want the clock to go down. And, I mean, you don't want to give them the ball. But she had her back completely turned. So I was just trying to waste some clock. And, you know, just came to my brain, so I just went for it and kind of worked. <laughs> Stay into the front. You can hold the mic. Oh. Dan Zakshevsky, outkick. Caitlin, on the possession before the offensive foul, can you talk about what you saw on that play and why you decided to make the pass rather than try to score yourself? Yeah, I think it was 39 seconds was the game clock, 30 on the shot clock. Um, so a nine-second differential, and, you know, I let it go down, and I think I started to drive right. Um, at about nine seconds, and Aaliyah Edwards was guarding her, and she was popping straight up to the top of the key, and Aaliyah Edwards completely left her to come double or show on me. So the read is to give the ball up. Um, and, you know, Hannah made a great play. The other two girls helped in. They got a deflection on the ball and just were able to get the ball and call timeout. Um, but, you know, that's the read. I'm giving the ball up 10 times out of 10. There's two people on me. I trust my teammates to, to make a play. And, you know, U UConn just played great defense. Um, but... I think the biggest thing is, like, after that turnover, we just went back right to the huddle, and Gabby came up with a huge defensive stop for us. We'll take our last question. Uh, Dominic Clary, Keon Sports. Um, in the stands, it was deafening uh, of the chance for you guys here tonight. What was it like, essentially, having all of Rocket Mortgage Field House chanting, go Hawkeyes, go Iowa, for that uh, entire game? Honestly, I probably speak for both of us. Like, when you're in the heat of the game, like, you don't hear it. Like, you just don't – you're just, like, so locked in the game. You can, like, hear the noise, but, like, you just are so focused on your teammates and, like, what's going on the game, going on in the game. Like, you don't really hear it that much. I think once the game's over, you really appreciate it. But um, it's not surprising. I think the way our fans have traveled all year long has just been absolutely incredible. And, you know, obviously Cleveland being, like, driving distance from Iowa City and the state of Iowa, a lot of them have made the trek. And, um, you know, it makes the games a lot more fun for us. So we're just super grateful. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Caitlin. Best of luck um, Sunday. <laughs>
A reminder for all in the room that the Iowa locker room is open until 1219. UConn's locker room is currently open as well, 1157 through 1227, and that the mix zone for Iowa closes at 1219 as well. And at this time, we will open up questions for Coach. We'll start with Nancy. Hey, Lisa, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, the game was obviously very physical, and I'm wondering what you thought about that. And, you know, there were, th there were things that, a lot of things that were not called, and then there was that, you know, the offensive call at the end. What did you see with that in particular? I really didn't see the offensive call at the end. <clears throat> it was, I was kind of blocked. Um, so, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't see that. Um, I thought that there was a lot of, um, you know, like Caitlin really didn't have freedom of movement. But you know at this point that there's, they're not going to call a lot, uh, especially after last year when, you know, Caitlin and Angel were on the, on the bench. I think you're just not going to see a lot of calls happen right now. And, um, yeah. I want to stay to our right. If you could raise your hand so the <clears throat> microphone can reach you. And then, Michelle, you'll be next. Ken O'Roaring with the Daily Iowan. What did you say to your team in the locker room at halftime? I was really proud of them. I mean, we got it cut to six points. Uh, we were down 12. Uh, we got it cut to a real manageable number by halftime. That's all you can ask. We came out really well in the third quarter. I thought our defense led to some good offense for us, and it kind of got us rolling in that third quarter. Um, we just talked about valuing the ball. We just turned the ball over. That's how our defense was really pretty good. I mean, they scored 13 points off of our turnovers. So we take that out of the mix, and it's a totally different half. Michelle, you're next. Howard, you'll go next, and then gentlemen behind you. Hi, Lisa. Michelle Smith from the next. I want to ask you first about Kate Martin's game tonight, and then I also want to ask you where does it, where does the confidence come from to go into the locker room at the, in the national semifinal and say we're okay, let's just go back to what we're doing in this sort of with the stakes in the atmosphere? It's the only thing you can do, right? I mean, truly, this is it's it's do or die, and you have to do what you do best and. We were not playing Iowa, what we call Iowa basketball, in the first half. Um, we weren't passing the ball. We were turning the ball over too much. But I was pleased with our defense and our rebounding. We out rebounded them by eight for this game. Um, so, you know, we just thought, let's get back to valuing the ball, trying to get some stops so we can get some pushes. And honestly, everybody was feeling pretty good at that point. Um, you, you try not to think about the end, right? I mean, that's just. You know, and that, when you start thinking about, oh, if we don't do this, we're going to lose, you're going to lose. So it was all forward facing, all forward moving, and we were going to try to, I mean, come out and win that game. Coach, we're going, oh, I'm sorry. You have a oh, I'm sorry. Kate Martin, what a warrior. I mean, that kid, she was not going to be denied in that fourth quarter. Some of those takes she had to the basket, turnaround, strong jumpers. Um, you know, I don't know what happened to her nose, but it, was obviously we all saw a lot of blood. Um, that poor kid has broken her nose, I think, every single year she's been at Iowa. Um, but she is a warrior. She's a leader. Um, she's the, the heart and soul of our team. I'm going to move to the front row, Howard. Lisa, uh, um, Howard Magdalene Thanatch, congratulations. Just early on, there was a timeout. Um, and then coming out of it, you guys went to Hannah a couple of times. Seems like that was a, a point of emphasis. Can you take me through just, you know, whether it was a conversation that went along with it and that decision-making process? Yeah, I mean, we felt like when we got a first foul on Aaliyah, uh, we had to go at her. I mean, she's such a good player. And I always tell our team the easiest way to guard somebody is to put them on the bench. Um, so I thought, you know, we did a good job of ISOing her and letting Hannah draw another foul. Robert Van Bruce, Cleveland.com. Congrats, Coach. Has it hit you yet that you only have one game left with Caitlin? And what's been your favorite part of watching her grow on the court? Um, no, it hasn't hit me that I only have one game with her. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's going to be rough um, because it's been such a joy to coach her and to be a part of watching women's basketball grow and be excited about her. Um, what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. What's been your favorite part about watching her grow on the basketball court? It's been her maturity. It's been her leadership. It's this kind of game a few years ago, she would have gotten so frustrated. She would have been, you know, really upset in the, in the huddles. 
she wasn't that at all. And sometimes people can feed off of her if she's like emotionally in a bad way. So I thought that her composure in the huddle, even when things weren't going well for her in the first half, was really a sign of her growth. Coach, we're gonna go to our right and far right. All right, Deion Cash, Fox Sports. Congratulations, Coach. Um, two part question. You beat a legend like Gino Oriema, and now you're taking on another legend in <laughs> Dawn Staley. Um, how are you able, you know, what's the mentality going into the next game? And obviously, this is the game everybody wanted to see Iowa, South Carolina. Um, talk about it a little bit for us. Um, first of all, I mean, going against Gino, he is one of the best minds in our game. He is unbelievable. I mean, the success that he's had. And he has built, dealt a really tough hand this year with all the injuries. I mean, for him to be in this game with all the injuries that he had to his, some of his star players is unbelievable. So, um, you know, my hat's off to Gino like it always is because he's, you know, somebody that has been uh, very, very successful in our game. You know, going against Don tomorrow, um, obviously, again, our, our Olympic coach, um, Everybody's pretty good at this level, though. I mean, when you're getting you know, into the Final Four, you're going to go against good coaches, and you're going to have great players. So um, we'll just be excited to give it a try tomorrow. Thank you. Any additional questions for Coach? Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. You and Caitlin in particular have talked for weeks, months, about getting Hannah to have more confidence and, and play with that confidence. What did it, you know, seeing that transform tonight or, or uh, you know, kind of play out tonight, how meaningful is that? And, and how did you guys get her to do that? You know, we, we elected uh, her to put on the Iowa, slap that on the, on the chart tonight to go to the championship game. Um, we just kept telling her how good she was. And, Honestly, the only thing that stopped her from being great was her own self. It was her own doubt. And she is a beautiful athlete, an explosive athlete, and she just held herself back. And so we're trying to talk to her about positive self-talk instead of negative self-talk and kept pouring into her about, you can do this. You can be such a beast if you want to be. Um, and so I, I, I'm just so pleased with her growth tonight. She just took, as a, as a sophomore and a young sophomore, she took another big leap tonight. Coach, I want to thank you for your time thank this evening. You. And best of luck thank on you Sunday, very much. 3 o'clock, ABC.